Hey 
This, this, this. Test, test, test. Test, test, mic test, testing. Test, test, mic test. Testing mic test. Test, test. Testing one, two, test, test, mic test. Kalangan and Kupurkan Chorus Manko E. Young on the main song, Casalelia, Labalabco Chorus in a Wayne Pond Pay. Puegi, Pachuan and Success, Uivan Pachuan Park, Kupur, O Pachuan Cup Cafe, Live Broadcast and the Gain Run Watch, Mapitata Joint Inauguration, the Casarawi and President and Kanta Kapachapachan, my Kunisha. Vice President, Speaker, O Chawakan, and Congress Kari Saksilu Ranwich. Puegi Chungal Pachuan, Patpachachan Lilang, O Pachuan Pai Rai Lakan. Mepan Pachuan Yanki Chongan Live Broadcast and Liki and Ranwich. Konang Menin Yan Pachuan Chiyanki Way, We are Chungal Sakaratan, Cape Wenny Lab. Pohon mula nuwa warak so kon pohon payu. Eh cungol sekarang walap pangku perancangan kan ko. Wau nak ke sapul malakan nala lakan kan ye ko. At cungol wau cororor ongkapnan wain pohon pay. Karyawan kapna 
Speaker, so go pong lapalap, lapalapakan chorus ng pinyan siya at mong what's so government. Uwai chumalwa, wong chuan wai yung sak. Pachawan po yan, luka yung promail kan mayin ka chinyi yang ka chong na live broadcast and run watch. Mapan pachawan mo yung yung sang nan kapitalin na vasem, mapachapal ka ruwain po yung pay. Ukmail ka chinyi yang ka chong na live broadcast and run watch. Mapan pachawan mo yung yung sang nan kapitalin na vasem, Kit pap ko pa isa tuwaw. FM, wali sa kwalo pong silo. Live feed, physics sa YouTube or Facebook. O ng cable TV channel na isa kriyaw. Pasan niyang, pagmainan niyang, da ir ko rin niyang kachin. O pachawan niya yang kach, o yang mamasa ni, da patpachawan, kasarawin and runwich. Basic say it, but you want to go young from my gun when I'm catching me young kids. Me, I plan, but you want to go to the lab program for something and run watch. Hurry. I'm going to have many lunch, you want to go to the lab. And but you want to go to the lab. But you want to go to the lab. And you want to go to the lab. And you want to go to the lab. And you want to go to the lab. Speaker and phone pay that's later. FSM Telecommunications Corporation, FSM Social Security Administration, or Point Paint Utilities Corporation. Moin sa pagay sa ako sa pulmara ng mas kan koras ng mga pewaj, rockage, o kaya yung koras yung pachyong o pachyo, nang live broadcast and runage. Kailangan yung kapag koras.
Testing, testing. I know it's 10 o'clock, and we will begin our program momentarily. Please just give us a few more minutes, and we'll start. Thank you.
Congressman Kerisak Sidukan Rapan 
Katlong the Patrolong Mulan Show to the Chick. My catching a young kid on non life broadcast and the Gayan Show set. But my young catching a patrol mamang even a Casarawi and Summer Child President Cup and can't take a cup of the Bachelor in Micronesia.
Kalangan dan kupurkan koros main kau yang sukses, mereka cekat, baca ulang yang sukses. Yai Presiden dan kawan tengah kapaca baca main Indonesia, Wesley W. Simena. Perhaps we can begin our ceremony for this morning. Let me first of all thank each and every one of you for for waiting and giving us the time to to sort out our issues so we'll we'll start momentarily Everybody to please find a seat if you can and please be seated while we start our program for this morning. Please allow me first to pay my utmost respect to the traditional leaders of Pon Bay and to the land which we stand, Pon Bay. I also pay my respect to all traditional leaders throughout the Federation, whether they be in the main islands or outlying islands or in the far remote corners of our four states. My most esteemed respect and I is record. This event is broadcast live, and so to those citizens who may be tuning in or joining us live or virtually online, a warm welcome to you from your capital here in Balagir. To every Koshrahans, year and afar, Latuo Ebainkos Nagaiwa Lenwo. To our families and friends from the state of Yap, Sirogobut, Sirogobilong, Ngatamol, Masiro, Ngamet Mi Kirti, Ngugubin. And do the people of my home state of Chuk, Arch Eletin Kabasanturo, Fairo, Fiti Silver Mamundin, Ranalem. It gives me great pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this joint presidential inauguration for His Excellency President Wesley W. Seminar and the Honorable Vice President Aaron Balik and members of the 23rd Congress of the Federated States of Micronesia. The first part of our program is the introduction of dignitaries and honor guests. We will begin with the four states leading the way as always. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honorable 
Francis Idemai, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Yap. May I also ask that we also recognize and acknowledge all the state leaders from the state of Yap who are here with us. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Tulenza W. Balik and Mrs. Balik. Governor of the State of Kosra. And likewise, may I also ask that we recognize and acknowledge the state leaders of Kosra who are here with us today. Please welcome the Honorable Alexander Narun, Governor of the State of Chuk. And in the same spirit of solidarity, may I ask that we also recognize the State of Chuk leaders who are here with us today. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Reed P. Oliver and Mrs. Oliver, Governor of the State of Bombay and host to our capital here in Baligir. May I also ask that we give a round of applause to the state leadership of Bombay who are here with us today. FSM is blessed to be host to various regional and international organizations. It gives me great pleasure to introduce for recognition the representatives of regional and international organizations based here in the FSM. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Momo Takuyuji, Regional Coordinator at the Interim United Nations Multi-Country Office in the FSM. Dr. Takuyuji is accompanied by Salvatore Sorrentino, Chief of Mission, International Organizations for Migration, and Mr. Kelvin Pedrini, Deputy Resident Representative and Country Manager, United Nations Development Program. Please welcome Mr. Kunuhiro Yamauiji, Resident Representative, Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA. Please also join me in welcoming Ms. Lindsay Timarong, President and Chief Executive Officer, Pacific Islands Development Bank.
Please join me as well to welcome Ms. Lara Studinsky, Director, Northern Regional Office of the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Takenaka Yoshiharu, President, Overseas Visionary Cooperation Foundation, or OFCF. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ria Moss Christian, Executive Director, Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission. And from our neighboring islands here in the Micronesian region, for our brothers and sisters, please give a warm welcome for the Honorable Joshua Tenorio, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. The Honorable Lieutenant Governor Tenorio is accompanied by Mr. Matthew Tabasna. And from the diplomatic missions and foreign countries, I have the pleasure of welcoming, and please join me in to do so, Ms. Hoja V. Fernakar, Political Council, Embassy of India in Manila, accredited to the FSM. Ladies and gentlemen, please also join me in welcoming His Excellency Yong Q. Bar, Ambassador of the Republic of Korea to the FSM based in Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Michael Kitchen, Ambassador of New Zealand, is here on island, but regrettably is not here with us to do some health reasons. I am honored to welcome on his behalf Mr. Matt Broom, Second Secretary, Embassy of New Zealand, based in Honolulu.
please welcome Her Excellency and Dean of the Diplomatic Corps here in the FSM, Joe Cowley, Ambassador of Australia to the Federated States of Micronesia, based here in Bombay. <laughs> Ambassador Cowley is accompanied by Commander Nigel Williams, Maritime Surveillance Advisor, Australia Naval Force. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Deb Hallen, Secretary, U.S. Department of the Interior. <laughs> Secretary Hallen is a designated representative of President Joe Biden of the United States of America. She is accompanied by Ms. Alisa Pip, Charge the Affairs, Embassy, U.S. Embassy in the FSM, the Honorable Erika Mortiscu, Deputy Assistant to President and Asian American Pacific Islander Senior Liaison Officer, Rear Admiral George Hoffman, Commander of the Region, Mariana, Joint Marianas, and the U.S. Defense Representative to the United States, to the FSM. Rear Admiral Hoffman is representing Admiral John Aquilino of the United States Indo Pacific Command, and the Honorable Carmen Gander, of course, FSM's very own favorite. Assistant Secretary, Office of the International and Insular Affairs, Department of the Interior, and Captain Nicholas Simmons, Commander, U.S. Coast Guard Forces Micronesia, Sector Guam. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming His Excellency Tang Renjiang, Special Envoy of President Xi Jinping of the People's Republic of China and Minister of Agriculture and Rural Affairs. He is accompanied by His Excellency Wu Wei, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China in the FSM, Mr. Su Pengfei, Director General of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, His Excellency Zhao Ajeng, Ambassador of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency Mr. Keiichi Furia, Furia, Special Envoy of Prime Minister Fumio Kishida of Japan, Chairman of the FSM Japan Friendship Congress League, and Chairman of the Pacific Island Nations Japan Friendship Congress League. He is accompanied by His Excellency Isashi Michikami, Ambassador of Japan to the Federal States of Micronesia, Keiichi Iwamoto, Deputy Director General, Deputy Assistant Secretary, Deputy Assistant Minister, Asia and Oceanic Affairs Bureau, Ambassador for Pacific Islands Region, Tomonori Minoa, Deputy Director, Ocean Division, Asia and Ocean Affairs Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, a very special recognition and a very warm welcome to President Simina's special guests from our Micronesian President Summit's family. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the Honorable Marcus Stephen, Speaker of the Parliament, Republic of Nauru. Speaker Stephen is accompanied by the Honorable Matt Ricoy, Deputy Minister of Commerce and Business Development.
Another very special recognition and very warm welcome to His Excellency, Sir Uncle Whips Jr., President of the Republic of Palau. <laughs> President Whips is accompanied by the Honorable Kafar Urur Balao, Minister of Health and Human Services. Please welcome another very special guest as well from the Micronesian region. His Excellency President David Kabua of the Republic of the Marshall Islands and First Lady Ginger Kabua. <laughs> May I also recognize the presence of the speaker of the Nidijala, my good friend, Speaker Kenneth Kitty, who is already seated. <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the leadership and members of the 20 year Congress of the various states of Micronesia, starting with the two year representatives. Please welcome the Honorable Senator Dr. Marilyn Abello Alfonso, State of Pon Bay, and accompanied by her son, Christopher Andre Alfonso. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Senator, Dr. Perpetua Kuhnman, State of Chuk. <laughs> Senator Kuhnman is accompanied by her uncle, Dominion Netlik, and her son, Bruce Roguro Kuhnman, and her nephew, Ty Fritz. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Senator Florencio Singora Arbor from the state of Chuk, who is already seated. Senator Arbor is accompanied by his granddaughters, Abigail Arbor Aritos and Susie Nakamura Harbor.
Please welcome the Honorable Senator Palikna Wele and Mrs. Wele, State of Koshrai. Also accompanying Senator Wele is a friend and our son, Edison Likiak. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable to either Ardus and Mrs. Ardus, who's already seated from the state of Chuk. <laughs> Senator Ardus is accompanied by his son, James Ardus, and Diwerik Ardus. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Isaac V. Figure, State of Yap. <laughs> Senator Isaac Figure is accompanied by a fellow student, Ms. Rafaela Uyoch. And now for the at large four year representative. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Senator Joseph J. Uruzumal, State, State of Yap. Senator Rosemal is accompanied by two children from Yap. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Senator Peter M. Christian and Mrs. Christian, accompanied by daughter and Jeanette. And now for the presiding officers of the 23rd 
FSM Congress. Please welcome the Honorable Floor Leader, Quincy Lawrence and Mrs. Lawrence, accompanied by their daughter, Akita Lawrence. State of Bombay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Vice Speaker, Robson U. Romolo, and Mrs. Romolo, accompanied by his daughters, Maeliandra, Kiolani, Kimala, and Triana. And I have the honor to introduce and welcome, and if you will join me in welcoming the speaker of the 23rd Congress of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Honorable Esmond B. Moses and Mrs. Moses, State of Bombay. Ladies and gentlemen, for the leadership from the executive branch, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Aaron B. Palik, Vice President of the Federal Micronesia, and Lady, Second Lady Adelida Palik. Members of Vice President Balak's family are already seated. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I ask that we all rise for the President of the Federated States of Micronesia. It is with great honor and privilege to present His Excellency, the Wesley W. Simina, then President of the Federated States of Micronesia, and accompanying the President is First Lady and Silly Simon. And members of President Simon's family are already seated.
Thank you and please be seated. President Simina, President Kabua, President Whips Jr., Vice President Balik, Speaker Moses, and members of the 23rd Congress, Acting Chief Justice Worswick, Special Envoys, Ambassadors, and members of the Resident Diplomatic Corps, members of the regional and international organizations, state governors, speaker and members of state legislatures, municipal leaders, special guests, and our closest partners and sister islands, families and friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. And welcome again to the 2023 Joint Presidential Inauguration Celebration Ceremonies for the leadership of the Federal States of Micronesia. As we begin our former part of the program, may I ask that we all rise for the boasting of the colors and please remain standing thereafter for the national anthem to be performed by the Pacific Mission Fellowship Young adults, please rise. Posting of the colors is stand behind you. And now we can allow the group to sing the national anthem. Yeah. 
Please remain standing for the invocation to be done by the Most Reverend Bishop Julia Angen. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Most gracious and ever-living God, you are the God of the universe. You created us, give us life, and sustain us with your divine power. This morning, we humbly call upon you to bless our gathering, that it will begin and end with the joy, peace, love, and fruitful results that come from your divine presence and providence. In a special way, we pray for your mercy and divine guidance on our new president, His Excellency Wesley Simila, and Vice President R.N.B. Balik, and all members of the 23rd FSM Congress. Help them to fear you above all and to lead with justice for all. Grant them wisdom to promote good and punish evil. Help them to govern in such a way that we are all able to lead peaceful and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Help them to work well with other branches of our government and to create laws prudently and execute laws impartially. Support them for that which is right in your eyes and defend the cause of the poor, the oppressed, and the needy according to your word and as a reflection of your character. Grant them everything they need on a moment by moment and day by day basis to make decisions that are good for the welfare of our nation as well as other nations. Lord, we also pray that we seek for our identity to found in both our citizenship and our service in your kingdom. Help our leaders throughout their term of office to carry out their job admirably well and with abundant results. Grant them the graces they need to help them make the love and the lordship of your son, Jesus Christ, known in our nation, particularly among those who have not heard of his name and learned of his truthful and life-giving ways. We make this prayer as your church and your nation in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. And please be seated. Before I move any further in the program, let me just also acknowledge the presence of President Emmanuel Mori and Mrs. Mori who are here with us, as well as the justices and associate justices at the national and state levels who are also here with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Bombay State is the seat and the host 
of our capital here in Balagir. In our Micronesian culture and tradition, it is customary for the host to welcome our guests and dignitaries. So may I invite the governor of the state of Pompey, the Honorable Reed P. Oliver, for his welcoming remark. Governor Oliver. Eating all wow, walk up in the Nanalanko, a pueki puel, eating all wow lap, tan kuburan, nan putak pikini up, nan marki in sokes, nan alek sokes, o bil patuan wauniki, irkan maket, maledi, tadakan, main sang and ranwood, nan putak pikini up, isanankan matalinim, isanankan waste on who, lap and on all and kitty. The Governor Johnny David, His Excellency President Simina, Honorable Vice President Karen Palik, His Eminence Bishop Julia Hankel, Reverend Pastor Miriam G. Ned, First Lady Nevesem, Second Lady Nevesem. Honorable Speaker Esmond Moses and Mrs. Moses, and the distinguished members of the FSM 23rd Congress, Okarusian Me, Patabanaranwut, Tankubur, His Excellency President Zimina and First Lady, and members of the First Family. The Honorable Vice President Haran P. Pollock, and the Second Lady, and the Second Family, His Eminence Bishop Julio Ankel, Pastor Reverend Midian Chinet, the Honorable Speaker Esmond B. Moses and Mrs. Moses, and distinguished members of the 23rd Everson Congress, Chief Justice and Associate Justices of the Everson Supreme Court. Governor Palik and Mrs. Palik of Kutrai, Governor Naroon and Mrs. Naroon of Juk, Lieutenant Governor Francis Itemai of the State of Yap, Speaker Yamaguchi and the 10th Tonpei State Legislature, Speaker of House of Representatives, Honorable Mersai, Juk State Legislature, President of the Senate, Honorable Arnold Coney, Juk State Legislature. Speaker Simeon Philip, the 13th Kushai State Legislature, State Judiciary and Municipal Governments, His Excellency President Surangel Whips Jr. of Pelau, and Minister Charles Opian, His Excellency President David Kabua, and First Lady Ginger Kabua of the Republic of the Marshall Highlands. Speaker Marcus Stephen and Deputy Minister Maverick Fo, Honorable Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio and Matthew Tobasna from the government of Guam, and a special recognition to our good friend, Ms. Carleta Leon Guerrero, 
U.S. Secretary of Interior, Madame Deb Haaland, Charity Affairs, Elisa Bibb, <coughs> Deputy Assistant Erika Moritsuku, Rear Admiral Hoffman, Captain Nicholas Simmons, and a special recognition to our FSM, U.S. former Ambassador to the FSM, who also was given many traditional titles, and I'm just going to share one of the most prestigious ones. Her title in Pompeii is given by the non marquis of Medellinim. The title is Nane Isbao. Her Excellency, Head of Diplomatic Corps, Ambassador Joan Cowley, Commander Nigel Williams from the Australia, Special Hanboy, Keiji Furia from Japan, accompanied by Ambassador His Excellency Ishashi Michikami, Keicho Iwamado, Tomonuro Minowa, and Special Envoy Tang Rienxing from the People's Republic of China, accompanied by Ambassador Wu Wei, Director General Su Wei, and Ambassador Zhao Anqing. Unfortunately, because of health reasons, Ambassador of New Zealand, Michael Ketson, is not here with us this morning, but I'd like to recognize the Deputy Chief of Mission for the Australian and New Zealand government, Mr. Matthew Broom. Political Council Pucha Farnagar from the Republic of India, Ambassador Yoku Park from the Republic of Korea, UN MCO Regional Coordinator, Dr. Mohe Taguchi, Takeuchi, IOM Chief Salvador Sorrentino, UNDB Resident Representative Kevin Petrini, JICA Resident Representative Kunioru Yamakuchi, BIDB President and CEO Ms. Lindsay Timaron, SPC Director Lara Sutinsky, OFCD President Takaneka Yoshiharu, and Tuna Commission Executive Director Ms. Rhea Maas Christian. My respect to everybody here this morning all of those that I should recognize and give my respect to, good morning. On behalf of the traditional leaders of Pompeii and the people of Pompeii, including the government of the state of Pompeii, it is with great pride and profound honor that I extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you to this auspicious occasion of the joint presidential inauguration of His Excellency Wesley W. Semina, President of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Honorable Aaron B. Pollock, Vice President of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Honorable Esmond B. Moses, Speaker of the 23rd Edison Congress, and the Honorable Members of Congress. Tonbei State, is honored to be the gracious host of this momentous event to witness the dawn of a new era guided by the resounding theme, our unity is our strength and prosperity. As we, the people of the Federated Micronesia, embark on this historic journey together, the Semina Palik administration stains reminds us that our strength lies not only in our diversity, but also in our ability to come together as one nation, standing firmly in our shared values and aspirations as Chukis, Kushrayans, Yapis, Pompeians, as Micronesians. Your Excellency, President Semina, our hearts are filled with hope and confidence as you lead our nation forward. Your commitment to unity, progress, and the well-being of our citizens serves as an inspiration to us all. We are confident 
that under your capable leadership that has been developed over the years as governor of Chuk and then speaker of the Everson Congress, this nation will continue to chart a path of prosperity guided by principles that prioritize inclusivity, fairness, and sustainable development. This joint presidential inauguration represents a remarkable moment in the history of our nation. A moment of reflection, reaffirmation, and recommitment to the shared visions that unite us all. As we reflect, allow me to share some words from our first president, the late Toshuo Nakayama, from his first inaugural address. And I quote, the Federated States of Micronesia is like a rainbow. It is a single beautiful thing, yet it is composed of many different colors. Our differences do not divide us, but makes us richer through their diversity. The ocean is our common link. It is our heritage and our greatest natural resource. Our highlands form our way of life, and our many highlands together, our states together, makes us stronger than our four separate states apart, unquote. May we, the people of the Federated States of Micronesia, be reaffirmed and recommitted to this vision of unity for our island nation. As we celebrate this momentous occasion, we extend our gratitude to the distinguished guests who have joined us from near and far. Your presence serves as a testament to the bonds of friendship and collaboration that unites us. Your support and solidarity inspires us to strive for excellence and foster enduring partnership. To my fellow citizens, we express deep appreciation for your unwavering commitment to our beloved nation. Together, let us continue to be the torch bearers of progress and work hand in hand to build a brighter future for generations to come. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Now is the time. Before closing, allow me to commend and congratulate the chairman and members of the inauguration committee for making this joint inauguration a memorable event. In conclusion, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the President, President Zimina, Vice President Palik, Speaker Moses, and the honorable members of the 23rd FSM Congress on assuming their new roles. May your leadership inspire us to build bridges, foster understanding, and strive for greater good of our nation. Let us embark on this journey of unity, knowing that together our strength will pave the way for a prosperous and harmonious Federated States of Micronesia. Thank you, and may this joint presidential inauguration be a turning point in our collective efforts and to pursue the progress of unity. May God bless the States of Micronesia and all its citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Oliver. And please, uh, let's have one more round of applause for the remark. <laughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our differences does not divide us. And reaffirming our people's aspiration for unity through which we find strength and prosperity and here for his inaugural address, please welcome His Excellency, President Wesley W. Simna.
Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Well, it's been raining. And since this is a celebratory event, let's feel joyous today. So if you don't mind, Master of Ceremonies, I would like to break for the ball at this time. I want to issue a presidential order <laughs> that we should listen to a song first before I make my remarks. Is that OK? Thank you.
Well, that kind of uh, wake us up, right? I have to confess, I have to uh, make them sing a song to be the extension of my remarks, because it's very short. So for that, I apologize. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. And to all of you, I have the distinct pleasure of presenting my warm greetings of Renalim, Lengo, Casalelia, and Mogadin. And we have just invented one word to paraphrase all of those. Kamarale! I wish I would say good day indeed, but with the range, some claim its blessings in our culture. But I'd say it's probably have something to do with climate change. <laughs> Let me join Governor Oliver by taking this opportunity to welcome every one of you to Paligir Bombay, our national capital. We are most grateful to you for adding special significance to this celebratory occasion with your presence and spirit of civic pride and patriotism, cordiality, and friendship. In coming together to celebrate the launch of this chapter of our journey together as a nation, it is only fitting and proper that we begin by acknowledging the authority of whom he truly he is truly the beginning of all things divine, rejoicing in the confident assurance of St. John in his maiden letter, and I quote, in the beginning was the word, end quote. From whom is the beginning, we ask for the bestowal of continued blessings on our country and our people. It is with distinct privilege to pay my respects to the traditional leaders of the four states of our federation, Chuk, Koshrai, Banbe, and Yan. I extend special recognition to those from Banbe, being the traditional owners and custodians of the land that serves as the seat of our national government. To the Baraman chiefs of Bombay, I present 
my heartfelt salutation. I Jungon Sagaratan Kapeli Owa. I hope I say that right. <laughs> it is incumbent upon us to recall with gratitude that the traditional leaders of our nation were present at the birth of our nation and had a hand in shepherding us to where we are today. Let me assure you that we will continue to look to them for guidance and wisdom. It is also with great pleasure and honor to recognize my colleague and friend, Vice President Palik and Mrs. Palik, my spe Speaker Moses and Mrs. Moses, members of the 23rd FSM Congress and their spouses, and Acting, Acting Chief Justice Carl Worswick and her spouse, and the Associate Justices of the FSM Supreme Court and their spouses. Justice, one word. You have one now? Thank you. My fellow citizens, allow me to also recognize with gratitude and pleasure the presence of some of our partners and friends with resident missions in our country. Representing the government and people of Japan is our longtime friend, the Honorable Keiji Furia Sensei. From People's Republic of China is the Honorable Tang Renjian. And from the United States is the Honorable Secretary Ted, Ted Holland. And of course, our present ambassador here, resident ambassador from Australia, Joe Kowling. Let me also take this opportunity to recognize the presence of my, to recognize uh, my immediate predecessor, President Banuelo, whom I thank for leading us to where we are today with exemplary dedication and uh, steady leadership. We also want to honor our late presidents and former President Aklelgam, President Ursimal, President Mori, and President Christian. Each of them responded with distinction to the challenges of our young nation in its own time. All of them worked tirelessly in advancing the growth of our democracy and the integrity and sound basis of our national development agenda. It is also my pleasure to recognize and express appreciation to the delegations from our four states, which are led by Governor Narun of Chuk, Governor Balik of Kushrai, Governor Oliver of Banbei, and Governor Chen of Yap, represented by Lieutenant Governor Itimai. <clears throat> their state delegations include representatives of their respective legislators and municipal governments, whom we likewise extend our recognition and appreciation. The Micronesian region is bound by a common cultural heritage, including our shared geography, history, and linguistic origin. This common heritage has been and remains a pillar of support for all of us. So it is with great pleasure that I extend a special word of welcome and appreciation to our Micronesian family delegations, represented here by His Excellency David Kabua, President of the Marshall Islands, and your wife, His Excellency Suranel Witch Jr., President of Palau, and also your delegation, the Honorable Marcus Steven, Speaker of the Nauru Parliament, the Honorable Josh, Josh Tenorio, Lieutenant Governor of Guam, and all members of your respective delegations. Our MBS and MIF will continue to serve as our platforms for dialogue within our Micronesian family. Let's keep those up. Our country has the blessings of steadily becoming a regional hub of diplomatic missions and international 
and regional organizations. In this connection, I am pleased to recognize with sincere gratitude the presence of the team and members of the diplomatic corps and the representatives of the regional and international organizations, including non-government organizations and civil society. I would like also to take this opportunity to recognize His Excellency Bishop Julio Angel and all members of clergy who are present here. So to all of our citizens who are here with us in Balikit, Vice President Balik and I sincerely appreciate your presence. We also thank those others from across our land who are unable to join us in person but do so by virtual broadcasts. We extend our gratitude to our citizens who are also joining us from overseas. Not least, we convey once again our heartfelt appreciation to our brave men and women serving in arms way across the globe in the armed forces of the United States of America in defense of our freedom democratic principles and values, friendship, and treaty commitments. In celebrating the joint inauguration of our national leadership, it is appropriate that I take this moment to assure the nation that Vice President Palik and I are committed to forging ahead as a dream where we intend to work together with each other in every sense of that word. Both of us will participate in major activities and policy initiatives of the executive branch. We, with full understanding that the office of vice president is only a heartbeat away from the office of the president, we will draw on each other's strengths and talents for mutual support for the benefit of the country. The, this unity of approach to our administration I believe is a desirable one. If you would allow, I would also take this time, because I don't want to be scolded. I would like to present my wife, Anseli, our children and relatives who are also with us and those who are unable to come. They are and have been my love and source of my strength, pride, and kindness. I will continue to count on their support and understanding in discharging the heavy responsibilities of the office of the president. My fellow citizens, in standing before you as the 10th president of our nation, I welcome the opportunity to share with you my vision for our country as we set our course together. As citizens, you are entitled to know the dreams and inspirations that serve as the ingredients for our vision to lead our nation in the next four years. First, let me assure you that we embark on this journey today with renewed commitment to pursue aspirations, the aspirations of our people as enshrined in our Constitution of the Federated States of Micronesia. This is not an incidental errand, but among the fundamental responsibilities to which our government must aspire in good faith. Second, in pursuing the aspirations of the people, we should con constantly reinforce the understanding that our success would not be based on what we say, however we say it, but on what we do and do together in our best intentions and efforts. The task before us he is heavy but sharing the burden and lifting it together will be less burdensome. In this connection, let us together acknowledge those who came before us, for it is from whom we recognize our inheritance of obligation to fulfill. May I suggest that we pay tribute to our founding fathers for their foresight and bold courage against many huts in building this one, this, this one nation out of these many islands and for what it is today, our country. 
And it is this nation for which we are inspired and humbled to serve to the fullest of our ability. I must reiterate my respect for our pioneers in nation building, for crafting the constitutional process and safeguards through which my predecessors and I were elected and entrusted to exe execute the house and powers and responsibilities of the highest office in the land. For this reason, I sincerely express my gratitude to the members of the 23rd FSM Congress for bestowing the rare honor on Vice President Palik and me to do our part to earn the privilege of joining our distinguished predecessors. While both of us appreciate your vote of confidence, getting elected is not enough. What counts most is that we get the job done. Unless we are mistaken, it is our belief that the citizens of this country would rather that we remain friends and colleagues because by doing so, we will work closely with, the, with each other. It is our desire to work with you, not just for the first 100 days or only when the fragrance of honeymoon remains fresh, but until the job is done. That essence of unity of purpose and vision must begin with us in the executive branch and between us, the Congress and the executive branch. In short, we stand prepared to work with Congress for the long haul, that is to the very end of this administration. To you, we are pledging the sincerity of our intentions. We hope you are similarly committing yourselves. My fellow citizens, recalling that our government is a government of men, not of angels, we are under no illusion that there will never be occasions for differences in views and policies between the political branches of our, of our government. <clears throat> we know there will be. But if we remain steadfast in the conviction that the resolution of differences is precisely the ultimate objective of governance, I am confident we will work through our differences and prevail over them before they split us asunder. Therefore, I urge that we continue <clears throat> to honor, continue honoring the self-evident truth that ensures the integrity and sustenance of our democracy. <clears throat> we insist that the measure of collective success is the satisfaction of the aspirations of our people. To succeed, this measure must be the rudder of our joint efforts. With this as our guide, and to keep us on track, I am further encouraged that we will be well placed to overcome any differences that may dare challenge our common resolve as a nation. It is not our purpose here to sound pessimistic. To the contrary, this is a basis for optimism. <clears throat> in fact, in, the juncture, in this juncture, in our journey as a nation, it is appropriate to take stock of our blessings. Our political union of four states, as envisioned by our forefathers and chosen by the people themselves, remains strong and united despite challenges posed by geography, history, and democratics. democratics. It is also our fortune that we continue to uphold the democratic principles and ideals set forth in our national constitution despite our unique differences in culture, language, customs, and beliefs. One after another, the, my predecessors have continually strived to build upon the achievements made by those preceding them in our ongoing quest to deliver our people and create, deliver for our people and create a more perfect union for our country. In large measure, they have prevailed in building a foundation of laws, policies, and services underpinned by the principles and values enunciated in the Constitution and supported by cultural and religious values that we have as a people. 
Let there be no doubt that we will continue supporting past endeavors and with our own contributions in creating a national agenda for economic development. We are inspired to take a close review of our domestic and external resources and harness them to achieve the developmental needs which our people deserve, particularly in the priority areas of education and health. My fellow citizens, since most of you were not present when I took the oath of office, you are entitled to hear directly from me about what took place and what significance it holds for me in leading our country. I consider it significant that you should know that with my left hand on the Bible, I took the hope of office of the president, where I solemnly swear, and I quote, to, to faithfully execute my duties and responsibilities, and will, to the best of my ability, uphold, promote, and support the Constitution and laws of the Federal States of Micronesia. So help me God. It is the same oath that all my predecessors also took. The significance of this oath can neither be overstated nor understated. Defending and upholding the laws and the Constitution is a solemn and sacred promise. It was not only administered by a justice of the law, but also taken before God. By taking that promise under hood, I committed myself to promote and support the unity of this country to the best of my ability. Having made that promise in the presence of God as witness, I am not sharing it with you, my fellow citizens. May we never forget that our country emerged from a long struggle from both within and without that could have left our country in a form far more different from what we have today. Fortunately, our founding fathers prevailed, and today we are the beneficiaries of their struggle. For them, unity became a sound commitment not to be written on paper only, to be read, but first and foremost to be honored by the constancy of our deeds and the strength of our convictions. My fellow citizens, the issue of unity inherently demands our careful attention and vigilance given the very nature of our government being a loose federation. Allow me to remind us in no unambiguous terms the states are not subservient to the national government. In my view, the proper role for the central government here in Balagir is to support the advancement of the states and to facilitate and coordinate services and activities between the different levels of our governments. Deriving its just powers from the states, except those that are expressly reserved to the national government or are essentially national in nature, the national government exists for the states. And it is precisely the system of loose federation that imposes upon us the sacred responsibility to promote the cohesiveness and constructive collaboration of the governments in our political union. On the home front, I am happy to note that within a month of my digging office, Vice President Balik and I made our maiden state visit to the state of Bunbury. It is my intention, God willing, to make similar visits to the other states at the earliest opportunity and hope to make follow-up visits to all the states. Our purpose is to cultivate good working relationships and enhance collaboration between all levels of government in our federation. It is not our desire to dictate the activities of the states and local governments unless by necessity. I do pin high hopes on the state visits to improve understanding and relations between the governments in our federation. But I should say a word of caution. The purpose of state visits is not to select projects and programs for public funding. Appropriation of funding for public projects is beyond the authority of the executive branch. The dual purpose of the state visits 
is to strengthen the partnership between and among our levels of government and by improving our intergovernmental relations, jointly discussed to jointly discuss our priorities for our development. We in the executive branch believe strongly in working together at all levels of our government to improve the conditions under which our resources can best be utilized for our collective good. No development would happen on its own, but by working together and by devising ways of collaborating. Government is not a self-executing machinery. Efficient execution of its activities and programs depends on creative imagination and sustained energy by us all. My fellow citizens, just as important, the people are our most valuable resources and must be the focus of our work. There is danger in the assumption that, that people are uninterested in taking part in the affairs of their government. My administration places high value on the belief that when citizens have a healthy sense of belonging in their community, they are likely to engage meaningfully in the ongoing task of nation building. Those of us in politics should take the initiative in setting the stage in engaging our citizens. It is our responsibility to inspire, further cultivate, and deepen a healthy sense of community belonging in our citizenry. Through the state visits, we hope to assure the citizens that they are not only the stewards of our land, but the ultimate architects and movers of our unfinished tasks of strengthening the foundations of our governments. The fact of our geographical makeup is too well known and should not be relegated to a back row seat. It must assume a prominent place in the formulation of our socioeconomic planning and development. It goes without saying that our federation encompasses more than just Baligar, the four state centers, and the bigger islands. It includes the rural and remote areas across the land that are often difficult to reach and are underserved. We must provide sufficient means of ocean and air access to better serve them. In this day and age, man has discovered the technologies of previously unimaginable capabilities, including in their area of information communication technologies. Science has led to revolutionary medical breakthroughs where remedies for diseases that were once believed to be beyond reach are now within reach. I am too aware of the costs involved and the constraints of our resources, but that is where the creativity of formulating a national response is to be injected for the purpose of maintaining in the end the integrity of our federation. Or should we take the option of standing still? Should we let the discoveries of our time pass us by in fear of financial costs alone? I am inspired to see the national government taking the lead and do its best in exploring ways to seek expanded access, for example, to the discoveries in medical field and in building a robust telecommunication service infrastructure. We are grateful for what has been leveraged and gained from our development partners. But we need to take a step further from where we are, especially in the priority areas of education and health. It is not our desire to propose here a list of specific agenda items for action. Expanded access to improve health services and telecommunication services deserves special mention because these two areas are critical components of our development strategy, recalling the priority placed on our health and education sectors. If indeed we aspire for greater advancement, the health and education of the nation must be kept dear and close to our hearts. Furthermore, by improving our priorities in health and education, advanced information and communication technologies also have the potential of keeping us connected as a federation, apart from spurring the development of our growing economy. Let it also be stated in simple and clear terms. If the government cannot serve the needs of the people residing in our many remote 
and rural areas. How can we expect expected to maintain the services of those living in our few urban or developed centers? This is an irony of development strategy that has been our mode of operation for a long time, even before the creation of the Federated States of Micronesia. It was the choice of Confinis, but it is a choice that is now that is now calling for creative adjustment if our federation is to be sustained. There is now an urgency for a new strategy for development. The new strategy should involve the extension of the concentration of development activities from the center to the periphery as, as well. No doubt the task will take far longer than the entire life of this administration, but the task must start now. And the urgent call is for us to accelerate the, working, the work during the life of this administration. To be sure, our challenges as a young nation are many and heavy. Some are deeply rooted and cannot be, cannot be uprooted overnight. But let us not deceive ourselves to believe we will make it to the promised land if we allow Habiti to be our roadmap. When a citizenry has lost its pride in itself and its government, the honor of public service is likewise treated with disdain. What's more, the final task of civic duty and respons responsibility is at serious risk. I therefore appeal to you, my fellow citizens, let it be our common resolve to overcome the culture of complacency. This is the unhelpful habit of going along for the sake of going along and not applying yourself for the betterment of our community. In the place of this dangerous in, in the place of this dangerous habit, let us give our forebears our forebears who proudly sang that I quote, full measure of devotion to thee, our native land, end quote. In so doing, we will fulfill our responsibility in these islands. We will fulfill our responsibility of assuming the reign of self-government in these islands and become, at long last, I quote, the broad guardians of our own islands now and forever, end quote. I'm not saying that it is easy to pull ourselves up and away when old habits are formed. But our collective development depends in large measure on liberating ourselves from the vices of complacency. This is an urgent task to which we must commit ourselves. Or should we wait for others to impose it upon us? Let there be no doubt about our preferred choice. Even at the cost of saying the obvious, the point must be stated firmly. Our advancement as a nation ultimately rests on a workforce that is equipped to perform the increasingly complicated tasks of governing. We should foster a workforce that values efficiency, productivity, and compassion without compromising fairness, transparency, and accountability. The minds and arts of our youth must be cultivated and developed to their fullest potentials. We will count on our youth to take on the task for those of us who are walking into our sunsets. If our youth do not come to the call of public service in the name of our country and do the heavy lifting, who will? Part of their responsibility is to ensure that the zone of national development is not concentrated in the major centers but extends to the remote or hard to reach areas. We must do this in order to sustain our federation system. My fellow citizens, on the external front, opportunities and challenges manifest themselves side by side. In the first place, it is self-evident that in the foreseeable future, we will continue to look beyond our national boundaries and make use of our external partnerships to augment our domestic development. The good news is that our country has become a bona fide and active member of international and regional communities. 
having established diplomatic relations with nearly 100 countries and gained membership in more than a score of regional and international organizations, including the United Nations. We take pride in the fact that we were once a ward of nations, but we are now a full-fledged member of that community of nations. Just as important, our young nation has earned the respect of the world community. We are proud of this achievement. It is a priceless commodity. It is for our own good to tend to and continually cultivate the respect that we have earned in the international arena, keeping in mind that the task of maintaining foreign relations is never a passive pastime. It is the intention of this administra administration that the eyes and ears of this country everywhere will be expected to bear their fair share of the noble burden in advancing our national interest in the world community of sovereign nations. Aside from the critical importance of the role that our external affairs play in our development, the, dynamic roads, the dynamics and growing complexities of engaging in the international arena has imposed greater expectations on a professional core of foreign service officers, one that is articulate, confident, competent, and collegial, or believing in the values of theme spirit for our collective goods. Good. Just as the nation will increasingly rely on skilled and conscientious public service officials, we need similarly qualified foreign service officers to be on the front lines of our country. My fellow citizens, one area requiring special mention is climate change, for it has been described as our number one existential security threat. The argument by our detractors that climate change is only a hypothetical scenario has effectively been buried and is now a bygone history. Our country has been active in contributing, has been an active and contributing player in the international climate change process. Facing imminent threat to our civilization, our option is not to walk away from the international climate change process and take on the stance of a bystander. bystander. There is no place for neutral onlookers in this process. Staying engaged in the climate change is a grand responsibility to minimize the threat posed to us and with God's blessing to keep our federation intact and prosper. <clears throat> Let it also be recalled that this year, we as a nation have turned two scores and four years old since our supreme law of the land went into effect. Our founding fathers had laid down our fundamental sailing course on the high seas of international diplomacy. It states simply, and I quote, we extend to all nations what we seek from each, peace, friendship, cooperation, and love in our, human, in, in our common humanity. This prescription borders on simplicity, yet it has served us well when encountering challenges on the world stage in the last 44 years and it is our position that we have to maintain this. But our engagement in the world arena must be more than seeking friends. For a young nation such as ours, this noble and critical task will be ongoing. We want to assure our friends and partners that attendant to placing great expectations on our eyes and ears abroad, we are defining the role of economic diplomacy as an integral and prominent part of our foreign relations. Domestic agency, agencies with related, related responsibilities and mandates are expected to bear the fair, their fair share of the burden to contribute to our redefined and enhanced economic diplomacy. Let me take a pause here to express on behalf of our country our sincere appreciation to our friends and development partners. Thank you so much for your friendship and generosity over the years. Given the mutuality of our interests, we will continue to do our best in ensuring that your schemes of assistance 
and support are leverage and earnest for the well-being and prosperity of our people. That, to me, is also part of unity as well. Finally, my fellow citizens, allow me to conclude by reiterating my call that we recommit ourselves to the under underlying principles and ideals set forth in our Constitution and as envisioned by our forefathers. Of particular relevance in our national life today is unity because it un underpins everything that we want and aspire to become as a people. Words alone are not enough. Only by doing it together will we, will we, as a united people, maximize our chances of charting the destiny that we want for ourselves and our future generations. Remember that our unity is our strength and prosperity. With the torch of leadership passing on to Vice, Pres Vice President Palik and I, this is our time. This is our moment. moment. This is a calling trust upon us that we must welcome and not defer, but accept together with God's continued benevolence and blessings. Let us be faithful to the call of leadership as we forge it in our journey together for the next four years as a people as an, and as a nation. Kiriso Jabur, Kudamulab, Kalangan, and Kamakar, thank you so much. God bless all of you and the Federated States of Micronesia. for the inaugural address. We will now have another musical choir by a group that traveled from afar from the Morlocks region in the state of Chuk. A choir from the island of Sadawan. They sang earlier. Arno, take it away.
event for today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I ask that we all rise for the benediction by Reverend Midian G. Neth. Reverend Neth. Let us pray. God, our Father, who loves and cares for us, we pray as we leave this place that what we agree to do, may we do this with love. Let your face shine on us. Let your love guide us. And let your care be in our hearts and minds. And so with your words, O oh Lord, I invoke your blessing on us and our leaders today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. That essentially concludes the formal part of our inauguration, inaugural ceremony. Please let us join together once again for a round of applause to the leadership of the veteran states of Micronesia. And just one announcement before we all depart. For our VIPs, light refreshments have been prepared in the central facilities, which I now wish to ask the president, vice president, and the speaker, and your respective spouses to lead the way for our guests. For the general public, please avail yourself to the various stands for the takeout. I hope you have a wonderful and pleasant stay here in Pond Bay. Kalangan Mogutin Kulomululab and Kriso Drabur. Thank you. Kalangan and Kupur. And John Kalabrok Sokon Pon Bayo. Magachin, ye young kitchen and live broadcast and again run watch. Mapit joint inauguration. Kasarawi and Salmachai President Cup and Neversem, His Excellency Wesley W. Simina, Vice President RNP Palik, Speaker and Neversem Congress, Hesmon B. Moses, or Irain. Congressman Chris Axelo and FSM, Mayor Kasarawipe, Pacho when we are run watch, and Captain and FSM, Mayor Pacho, Palker Wayne Ponpe. Physics AH Radio, Men Pacho when Kapungong, John Way Pogon and Ponpe Yun Suck, Puegis our Mile Kupurma, Makachinia Young Kitch, Online Live Broadcast and Run Watch, Mayor Physics AH Radio, Pacho when Pakatar, 
Nine Sabul Mar Men Cafe Second and Physics Age Radio. Kilorex Kit Pop Cafe Sak Tuo Nine AM. Nine F M eighty eight point three. Nine Live Feed YouTube Facebook on an FSMTC Cable TV Channel Re Sak Rio. Pelajung Al Kapung Lab Choror Pan Pachalang Opsin Kapnan Wayne Pompey Speaker and Pompey Legislature. Eversam Telecommunications Corporation, Eversam Social Security Administration, Administration, or Pon Pedritis Corporation, or Kapung Ong Chon Wayne Pon Payonsak, Mela Eversam Ranwich. Sabacha Wan Kaira, Sabul Marlai Broadcast and Lagina Sukset, Kalangan and Kupuran Korusian, or Kasalelie Manko.